viewers, you're watching Public TV English. We bring you the major updates today. Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina on Monday left Dhaka in a military chopper amid nationwide violence in the country. As per latest reports, Sheikh Hasina has left for a location in India. There is, however, no official confirmation. A local media outlet said that Hasina's military chopper took off from Banga Bhavan, the official residence of the Bangladesh president, with her at 2.30 p.m. local time. Sheikh Hasina was accompanied by her younger sister, Sheikh Rihana, in the chopper. Protesters forced open the gates of Gono Bhaban and entered the premises of the Prime Minister's residence around 3 p.m. today. Thousands of people joined the anti-discrimination students' movements, marched to Dhaka program at the Mirpur 10 roundabout and moved towards Farm Gate. On August 3rd, organizers of the anti-discrimination student movement announced a single-point demand for the resignation of Hasina and her cabinet members. The National Investigation Agency on Monday conducted a spot inspection at the Rameshwara Cafe in connection with the March 1st bomb blast case. The NIA brought the accused, Musavir Hussain Shazib and Abdul Mateen Taha, to the Rameshwaram Cafe in the Kundahalli at 5.30 a.m. for the spot inspection. NIA officials recreated the entire scene from Musavir entering the restaurant, planting the IED and the bomb blast that occurred at Rameshwaram Cafe on March 1st this year. The NIA also gathered information about the route taken by the suspected terrorist on the day of the blast, the bus stand where he was seen and what he ordered at the cafe before the blast. The NIA also made Musavir wear the same cap and mask he wore on the day of the blast. Later, the NIA officials took Musavir to the mosque near Huri Junction where he changed his clothes after the blast at the Rameshwaram Cafe. A bomb blast had occurred at Rameshwaram Cafe on March 1st this year. Minister H.D. Kumar Swami on Monday hit out at the Congress government in Karnataka and questioned their poll promises regarding transparency and clean administration. Kumar Swami said that even after a year of coming to power, the state government refused to change their attitude. He accused the state government of pressurizing officers and taking money for transfers. Kumar Swami said that the Mysuru Chalo Padayatra, organized jointly by BJP and JDS in the state, is to educate the people. After the recent deaths of three UPSC students in Delhi's old Rajinder Nagar, the Supreme Court on Monday took Suomoto cognizance on the issue related to safety norms in the coaching centres. Three students drowned in the basement housing a coaching centre in Delhi's old Rajinder Nagar that flooded following heavy rains in the national capital last week. A Supreme Court bench observed that such institutes have become death chambers. The top court was hearing the petition filed by the Coaching Federation of India and dismissed its appeal against the Delhi High Court order. The court said that recent unfortunate incidents are eye-openers for all. The court further suggested that such institutes shall operate through online classes until they fully comply with the fire and safety norms. The top court also recommended that norms shall include proper ventilation, safety passages, air and light. Ukraine President Volodymyr Zelensky announced the arrival of F-16 fighter jets in his country. He thanked Denmark, Netherlands and the United States for the support. Further, he also described the arrival of F-16 fighter jets in Ukraine as a new chapter for the country's air force. Since the start of the war, Ukraine has been urging its allies to supply the jets to help defend its skies against Russian missile attacks. Russia maintains air superiority over Ukraine and the F-16s offer a significant improvement in Kyiv's weaponry. More F-16 jets are expected to arrive in Ukraine, Zelensky said.